Hi there, me again, Kleshner Handel here. I just wanted to show you a little stitch that I have got here, which makes your twin beads look like they have been hand knitted. Now you might see me grasping my wrist like this, it's to stop my lovely bangle that I've made from slipping down out of sight, out of camera. Um, it really is quite the most divine stitch. The other thing that's great about it, also it makes me pull my double chins back like this too. All of you ladies of a certain age will understand this, although you're probably very beautiful. But I'm just going to take this off me. Now the reason I'm, I'm doing it carefully is that you don't want your bangle, unless of course you choose to put a wonderful, I'm just taking my hand down here to do this, says she, looking very concerned, right, okay. Um, you want your bangle to not be too big and this stitch is the most amazing thing. For any of you going away who like doing cruises or um, want something that packs down very easily, this is the baby here. It's like a vertebrae. I'm just going to show you another version. I have made it in a round stitch. Wow, wow, my art is. Um, I've also made it, as you can see here, with one row in one colour. So I've made it in a stripe stitch as well. It's incredibly versatile. Um, and I've also made it here in a half and half stitch. So it's the most fantastic um, twin stitch that you can have. I'm completely besotted with twin beads because they give you the opportunity to do things other beads may not do or you can do with other beads but in a more complex way. So without further ado, I'm going to take you down to the bead board. Okay, I will now show you how to make this really rather wonderful, what I've dubbed knit stitch, um, twin stitch. Now, what you will require, if you want a bracelet which is a thick band, like this one I've made here, you will probably need somewhere in the region of 70 to 80 grams of twin beads. But if you want a thinner one, um, a lot less, obviously. 30 grams of twins or duos, call them what you will, is around 480 beads in it okay just so that you know that one gram is about 16 beads and the other thing that you will require so I've got two different colors here is some size 8 seed beads so one gram of size 8 seed beads is 40 beads these are little size 8 seed beads aren't they the most divine color in fact I'm going to show you the tube with all of them in isn't that just lush I want to eat that, you know, it's really weird. I have this strange, compelling thing, I want to eat colour. But then I suppose we do eat colour, you know, some of the best dishes are the most colourful ones, aren't they? Um, anyway, um, you'll need some something like a bead along wildfire. I always have a, a thread zapper, you can see I've had this for a long while because I've got my sellotape around it. A pair of scissors and a size 10 or a size 12 needle. Do you know, aren't we beaders lucky when you think about it? You know, if you're a bloke doing DIY, you need some really expensive materials. You know, if you're a sewer, you need a darn great socking sewing machine. All we need is a tiny little thing of beads. You know, a little bit of thread and a needle, a pair of scissors, and you're away with the fairies here. Fantastic. Okay, without further ado, what I'm going to try and do is to show you... I'm going to make a tiny little thing that maybe you would use um, as a napkin ring. Um, just so that you can see exactly how to do this. And, you know, part of it is to do with tension as well. The other thing I've often wanted to say is that you maybe can use something other than two size 8s at the top here. But the, reason, the purpose for using the size 8s, as you can see, is to keep the two seed beads apart so that you are creating that V shape, which looks, when it's done in a number of rows, like a bit of hand-knitted beading. So, let's start this. I'm going to use the light-coloured beads because I think you'll see those better. <clears throat> and I'm going to use my size 8 beads here. Um, I'll put those over here in my little magic circle, which is here, my dear friends and followers, so that um, you can see exactly where it is that I'm doing things. It's very difficult 
unless you have a, a three camera setup which would require an awful lot of expenditure rather than YouTube um, to keep within the parameters that somebody can actually see. So I would always hold maybe, I don't know, five or six inches in your hand like this. And we're going to start quite simply by picking up two size eights, two twins, two size eights, and two twins. Now, it would be very boring if I kept on doing that, so I'm going to keep picking these things up, you know, and perhaps talk about the wonders of twin beads. Twin beads, to me, look like a little piggy's snout. Um, they are oval in shape. Um, they have, by the very nature and the name of them, two holes, and they have a little peak in the middle. The difference between twin beads and super duos is that super duos are a bit um, more finitely engineered. You know, they, they are, they're also an awful lot more expensive than twins. And whilst it's lovely to work in super duos if you're feeling flush, the twins do actually do the same job. So I'm going to pick up just a couple more of these, a couple more of these, and two more twins. And then I'm going to join them up into a circle. Now, one of the things that I would say with... Oh, hold on, I've got too many here. There we go. I've got a bit overzealous here, folks. Let it run away with me. Right. Um, this is either for a, a fairy or someone with most exceptionally small wrist. No, it's a fairy bracelet we're making here. And I'll show you another one in a, in a minute. Right. One of the things I would um, encourage you to do when you're working this particular stitch is try and keep your tension on the first few rows um, very loose, or at least give yourself the ability to pull things apart a little bit, okay? Now, you'll only need your size 8 beads in the first and the last row that you are making. Now what we're going to do is what we call stepping up. So I'm going to go in the opposite direction. As I told you, um, we have two holes in these beads which you can see here and here. We're going to go step up or step down maybe is the best way of putting it through the second hole. So there we go. Can we see that? Lovely lady camera woman. Kaylee with a kicking cur. Right, okay, and we're going to pick up two of these beads and they are going to basically go in between my two um, beads here. Hold on, I've got my hand over it now. Can you see I've made a little V? Then I'm going to go into the next couple of beads and uh, this is why you need the looseness here, because I'm going to actually do one whole row so you see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and you can, so I've gone in between these two beads again, and yes, it all looks very loose and wibbly at the moment, but we can always tighten it up. But if you've done it very tight and you've tied a knot, you can't loosen it up afterwards. Hold on, and I'm going through these first one of this. So in between each pair of twin beads what you're doing is you're placing another two beads. You're ignoring the two size eight beads which are then going to get bunched up when you go into your um, second or third row. And this is where, oh, hold on, no, I haven't gone into that one. There we go. The other thing it's always worth considering is checking that you have two holes free in all these beads. You know, I, I can imagine as a manufacturer of these beads, right, can you see? I'm having to pull this around a little bit more and I'll show you in a minute, hold on. Um, sometimes one of the holes in these beads gets horribly, concentrate Kleshner, um, gets horribly gugged up and um, technical term you understand, gogged up, basically it gets filled with whatever the colouring is 
or the colorant um, that they are putting in the bead and you basically cannot for love nor money get through it although I have to say that twin beads are incredibly durable and if you put too many and you want to break a bead off which is a very naughty thing that we all have done at some time I'm sure they're not easy to do that with right I've now gone back whoops through that <coughs> Right, there's my very weebly looking circle here, okay? Now, as you can see, I can now, because I've left that tail there, start to tighten this up. And it's not until you have done a few rows of this stitch. So let me just lay that down there to recap. Can we see that? Can you see these beads here start to bunch up? And it will initially feel quite stiff when you're working this stitch. So I'm now going to turn around and I'm going to go back the other way. And it will start, <coughs> excuse me, to go into a, a, a flatter and yet more knitted looking shape. So I'm now going to do another row through here. And if you can also vary where you start and finish each row, I do find it makes for a more robust make. There we go. I'm now starting to pull it in a bit more because I feel confident that my beads are going to be sitting on the top. Can you see how it changes its shape slightly? There we go. Right, it's now starting to sit into a more tubular form. That down a bit and it's now starting to look like it's a knit can you say that gosh it sounds a bit like that lovely have any of you read the the twits uh, the roll doll book if not I do commend it to you it's a fantastic I say knit I say twits because of course I'm thinking of knit twits aren't I there we go And you kind of are probably by now realising exactly how valuable a, a stitch this will be in your stash of stitches. Now you can always go back through the initial stitches and pull it more together once you've got around. Right now, there we go. I've caught up with the beginning of that row again. Right. Can you see... <clears throat> what is happening now I'm, I'm still going to carry on as if I'm doing that row just a little bit more because it makes for a much more durable join so I'm going past this one by about two there we go <clears throat> I'm going down into the middle here And I'm going to step up on this one and I'm going to turn it over and then I'm going through here, the next one here, and then you start your next row. But I think you'll already see how starting loose is of a benefit. Now when you first start doing it, you, you will find the tension is very difficult. You can always go back over the whole thing. Look, can you see here? It's a bit loose. But it's much better to have it looser and workable than to have it too tight. Um, and you may end up with a piece that breaks or a piece that's just unworkable. Okay. <clears throat> so I think you get the drift now, don't you? Let me just pull that little black thread out from there. How beautiful is that? And how clever is that? And that is all I have done to create that piece. This is a half done piece, okay. And you can see here I've just done one side of the twin. Let's get a little pin here. In one colour and another in another. So it has a great versatility to dependent on your colours. Right. Let me just tell you that when you get to the end... <clears throat> I'll show you on this piece here. So at the beginning, I put my 
two beads, two twins, two beads, two twins. At the bottom, you actually use your two size eight beads to keep the beads of the knitted part apart. And that, my dear friends, is as simple as that. That is how you do a knitted effect twin beaded stitch.